Now let us understand the lost jewels in the summary on an elaborated version. The lost jewels. The story opens with the narrator stopping by a village ghat with his big boat and being accosted by a local schoolmaster with such an unnatural brightness in his large eyes that the narrator is compelled to comment. He made me think of the ancient mariner of English poet Coleridge. The reference to Coleridge ancient mariner not only situates the narrator in the storyline in the milieu of middle class Bengali Bhadralok with their love of English literature and the schoolmaster as one possibly with as unusual a story to relate as the ancient mariners. But he also anticipates the postmodern discourses regarding intertextuality cutting across linguistic, racial and cultural differences way back in 1898. The schoolmaster then tells the story of Pani Bhushan Saha, an educated, enlightened businessman and his barren wife Mani Malika, the story of their life presumably in the dilapidated mansion behind them and their unnatural, mysterious death by drowning in the river in front and it turns out to be a story about Mani Malika's ghost. Well, as I told you, the mystery in the end of the story is that Pani Bhushan finally gets drowned in the same ocean as the, riv as the rumours uh, occur that Mani and Modu also drowned in the same river. Moving on. However, as the schoolmaster finishes telling the story, there is darkness and silence all around. And then he says that the gentleman apparently does not believe his story. When asked back whether he himself believed in the story just concluded, the schoolmaster replies that he does not because Dame Nature does not have the leisure to write stories. And secondly, the gentleman in the boat interrupts to inform him that his own name is Pani Bhushan Saha. Without showing any embarrassment, the schoolmaster says that he had guessed that and wants to know the real name of Pani Bhushan's wife. The answer is Nritekali. The whole game about names at the end of the story hinges on the false name the gentleman had given to the schoolmaster at the beginning of their conversation. As he had proclaimed to the readers then that the name he had given was a deliberate falsification. Now, at the end, there is no guarantee that he is not uttering the name Nritekali with his tongue in cheek. Now here, the narrator tries to explain that at the end he had given a name Nritikali to the Pani Bhushan's original wife. But we are also not really sure, like he falsified his name and decepted us right at the beginning of the story, he is not decepting us in the end. Moving on, whether the story's Pani Bhushan was really fictitious or the gentleman's claim to be the real Pani Bhushan is another lie. The complex questions regarding this issue indicate that these are multiple possible interpretations of the nature of truth and fiction in this ending. Such ambiguity invites varied response from the readers and this open ending is a mark of postmodern relative strategy. Moving on, we'll try and understand the character sketch and the characterization of each character held up in the play. These points will help you answer various kinds of questions related to these characters. Bhushan Saha, he was an educated Bengali, speaks faultless English, lives in a style, caring, loving and gentle man, buys gifts for his wife, sends messenger to know about his wife, gets a lot of jewellery for her, does not get angry at his wife when she refuses to give her jewellery. Next is the schoolmaster. Enormous, bald-headed person, shining eyes, thin face, keeps asking various questions, prolongs the conversations because he's a talkative personality, narrates incidents very confidently, coins each details and concocts incidents. Money. 
beautiful and attractive female her husband loves her for her beauty gives her a lot of gifts does not reciprocate love considers her husband a machine does not part with her jewelry at all because this story is all about money and her fondness for her jewelry refuses to give to her husband when he needs it fondness of her cousin madhu elopes with him along with jewelry and does not help her husband runs away with her jewelry at the end the moral that we get out of this story is that a woman has great weakness for her jewelry and does not part with it even when she is in dire need of it we'll end today's lesson with just a small saying by rabindranath tagore you can't cross the sea merely by standing and staring at the water i hope you understood the fiction part of this story pretty well all the really best for your exams